room would fall out, I would have predicted, and correctly I might add, that most of you would be D's. Raise your hand if you're a D personality. Point proof. Well, so, that. What's that? <laughs> oh, my apologies. <laughs> That's the detail oriented table. <laughs> I busted your shot. <laughs> so. What's that? That's okay. That's not uncommon. So, so guys, real quick, the next group is the influencer group. Once again, if you follow that spectrum, the influencer, these are your people, people. You know, Darcy, are you a high eye? Raise your hand if you're a high eye. Thank you. I didn't even need you to take this test. <laughs> Joey's a C. Yes, you are. You guys are both. So, I'm a. You're a C. I'm two things. I'm a C and an I and almost a D. Nailed it. <laughs> Check. So, let me uh, keep explaining this because there are a couple things. What's that? Where's that? Oh, it's right here. So, what did you get? The. What thing? Oh, that's in your book. The, the other book. The, the book book. Yeah, that one. So, the I, these are your incredibly friendly, people-oriented or uh, people-oriented people. Uh, optimistic, group activities, collaboration. These are, a, in a lot of organizations, are folks in human resources, sales. They are the ones that are out there. Channing at Benning, I think we can all safely assume Channing is a high eye. If he's not, he's doing an incredibly horrible job at faking it. <laughs> he is a high eye all day long. Now, we come to the other side of the spectrum, which is that, once again, this is graphically the same exact thing that I just showed you. Your steadies, my S is in the room. I call them the Steady Eddies, mainly because it rhymes, uh, and that's how I think. <laughs> steady Eddies, they're consistent in performance, controlled, reliable, compatible. You know, the idea of cool cucumbers. You know, I, in our organization at FMI, these are the folks that are just like, can't we all just get along and work together and make this thing happen? They just make you feel good to be around them because they have almost a calming influence on people. Why? Because they're very people-oriented. However, the high S's are also not big on change. So a high I on one side likes to be interacting and, and doing different things with different people. High S's like people, but they like doing the same thing over and over and over again. For instance, someone in maybe accounting, you know, and this is not a, a, an indictment or a general, it is a generalization. You know, if you put me in accounting, my head would explode. Doing the same thing every single day, all the time, never seeing anything different, but you work through spreadsheets and create a spreadsheet, do a spreadsheet, that would exhaust me. A high ass goes, that's my job, that's I like doing that stuff. But if you come in and say, we're going to implement a new payroll system tomorrow, and you do it the wrong way, their head will explode. So once again, they're the calming force, but they also are not big on change, because they got to know how the details come together. On the other hand, we have the high C, the critic. These are accurate, systematic, calculating, detailed folks. Uh, you can see. Some of the, the, the ideas, the diplomas on the wall, credentials, detailed answers. Uh, a position that goes without saying uh, for a lot, uh, and probably most of the estimating folks in here, you are probably high C's. You may say, well, Greg, I'm a high D, high C. Okay, that's fair enough. But you also know you're a high C because when I asked you to connect the dots, you used a straight edge to connect the dots. Did anybody do that? I did. Thank you. 
you proved my point. So kind of like I've done this test before. I don't know. And then and many offered it to me, and I said, well, I Yeah, you're like, why do we need lines? I don't need no lines. No. So now you probably are curious, and as my friend with the dog made the comment before, but it depends on the situation. She's absolutely right. Which is why what I didn't ask you to do, simply for time, if you recall, you had graph one, graph two, and we focused on graph three. Graph three is who we see every single day at Benning. That's, that's us. But graph one and graph two are important as well, and that's part of your homework. What I want you to do, kind of offline, is to plot those out. Yes, they may be very different. Graph one, and it tells you actually at the bottom of this what graph one and graph two are. Let me flip to it. So graph one, the idea is what we would call being at rest, which uh, I know a lot of you kind of probably chuckle when I say that. What the heck does graph one meaning at rest mean? Well, this is a situation where uh, you're not necessarily stressed or having a lot of what I would consider kind of external stimuli. That's yeah, you at rest. Graph two is when you're stressed. So, for instance, graph one, the job's going well. Everything's going stupendously as it should. Graph two, you all of a sudden, the ceiling falls down on the job site. What happens now? The customer comes out and they're really ticked off. The question is, some of you, if I asked you to plot those three graphs, I would see three identical graphs. Yeah. Because what you see is what you get, meaning I don't change my personality. On the other hand, some of you may actually have what's called an inversion. So for instance, maybe you were a high D personality on that big graph that I asked you to do. But if you look at your stress graph, you become submissive. What we're saying is, all of a sudden, when the going gets tough, do you kind of turtle up? Meaning, you become very, what can I do for you? How do I help you? Some folks are very big picture most of the time, but when the stuff hits the fan, they become super detail oriented. Now they get into your proverbial stuff. So what, when you look at graph one, graph two, graph three, if you see three entirely different graphs later on, you go, wow, how can I have three different personalities? This is like some kind of, should I go check my, myself into the hospital for multiple personalities? No, that's not uncommon, depending on the environment you're in. But the only thing I'll pose to you is, is that working for you? You might say, well, boy, my team tends to, tends to think that when I get stressed, I become a micromanager. We never use that word, do we? <laughs> well, is that working for you? Do you all of a sudden become super, uh, you know, into the details? But two weeks ago, all you cared about was getting done. Hey, we just got to focus on the finish. But now this last two weeks, hey, did you paint that baseboard right there? I want to see the paint. Did you use a roller or did you use a brush? It's like, oh my gosh, stop getting into my business. So I ask you, is that working for you? And then that last thing, the, like I said, the Atlanta phone book here, the tax code, uh, that's your personality because some of you were, well, I'm a high DI with a little bit of a C. Okay, whatever. Uh, that has taken you and now gives you your very specific or customized approach. And you can go through and read this. This is your book to keep. Um, and obviously, I have several other books up here. I'll leave them with Darcy. But I heard one of you say you'd like to give this to your wife, which I would recommend against. God, no. <laughs> Some of you will tell your, <laughs> your spouses will say, so, so let me understand. Benny bought this guy in to teach you about your person. I could have done this for you and saved you a bunch of money. I get it. So, 
Now, some of you will also quickly say, well, Greg, so what? I know what I am. I've been doing this for 45 years. I know my personality. Yep, you're absolutely right. However, if I asked you, what's your customer relationship like? What's your designer relationship? What's your relationship with the accounting department? Um, what would the answer be? And then more importantly, could you interpret their personalities? Some people are pretty easy. For instance, as I said, Channing, he's a high eye. So before I kind of start talking business with Channing, we automatically know. Channing is talkative, he's friendly, he's going to want to develop that relationship. You know, so before we start going, ah, uh, hey, I need you to fill out this form, Channing's like, slow down, bro. Let's just talk about Auburn and how great we're going to be this year, and uh, it's going to be so wonderful, and blah, 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 and Auburn this, and <laughs> I'm joking. My point is, knowing that going in, Am I the one that doesn't like small talk? So if I'm the D, and I don't want chit chat, but I need Channing to do something, could we create friction because I'm going, man, Channing all I wants to do is talk, and I just want to get stuff done, and Channing's about, I want to build a relationship. Is that creating friction? So point of this exercise is to not necessarily, I don't care about you per se, I care about how you interpret others. So could you look at your customers and give them the disk? Now, obviously, we can't say to a customer, oh, excuse me, could you go ahead and fill this thing out and send me the results? You're going to have to figure this out by how they act. For instance, I've worked with engineers for many years. And as a reformed engineer, I will tell you, they are systematic. They like detail. I joke about the pictures on the wall, you know, and they have all the rewards and everything is measured perfectly, like those pictures in the back that are perfectly measured. Uh, you know, it's actually driving me crazy because there's a little dip in a couple of them. And once again, I walk into their office and I can start to read the room and I go, okay, this person's a high C. Do I have to change the way I would approach the situation? Or problem. So you may even ask yourself, well, Greg, we were just introduced to this, so I don't know if I'm a professional enough to be able to, to be a psychologist to be able to interpret. So I've given you a couple of things like what I call cheat sheets. So the first one, laid back and low key. You know, what to do when I'm communicating. Uh, energetic and emotional, you know. What to do? Well, obviously, someone that has that deep, yeah, you can just tell they got passion. You know, the last thing to do is kind of walk in and go, okay, put it in writing. Oh, my gosh, you know, man, can't we all just get along, brother? You know, I want to feel good. This does not mean you don't follow through and hold people accountable. However, my approach walking in there with a bunch of forms and putting it on the table, say, sign this, send this, you're going to have to figure out how to engage people. Accurate, analytical. You know, if I walk in there to someone that wants a lot of detail, I don't just send a proposal to uh, Mr. Publix and say, this project will be $10 million. Done. Well, uh, 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 someone at Publix that's very detailer is going to go, show me the breakdown, show me the details. I'm not buying it. I want to see structure, backup, support. Ah, don't worry about it, man. We'll figure it out. We'll make it all happen. That's not going to work. So, direct and dominant. This is a kind of a message to all the D's in the room. You know, once again, how do we, you know, at, uh, not actually attack a D, but converse with them. Be direct. I have many clients that are high D personalities. You know, they're like, just tell me what it's going to be, Greg. Are we going to get this thing done? Are we going to make it happen? Yes. Also, hitting them between the eyes. Don't beat around the bush. Be direct with them. You know, in fact, they appreciate that bluntness. You may go, oh, that's, not a, that's not my character. You're going to have to morph yourself to some extent. But this is the cheat sheet. What I'm going to have you do now is the DISC final exam. 
We're going right to the crash course here, folks. There are seven little vignettes or, or cases. You're going to work with this t your table to do these exercises. I counted the tables. I was going to give one to each table, but I decided I want you all to experience this. So what I want you to do, maybe break it up at your table, but figure out when you read the case here, I'm not going to tell you what their trait or their uh, whether they're a DIS or C. That's your job to figure it out. What would you think based on all the characteristics? This is like CSI. I don't know if any of you watch those crime shows, but you're going to have to be a detective here, and I want you to play detective for folks like Steve and Joe. But also look at the answer here, or the question I should say. So we figured out what Steve's personality is, but what about what we're solving for? So in this case, how should management deal with Steve's personality to capitalize on his talents? So talk with your group.